Hello, hello, Imaginary Villain here, and I'm ready to do a Pixie Particles tutorial for RPG Maker MV and MZ. The commands I show you will work in either or, so no worries on that front. We're going to be using a plugin called Particle Emitter, which I've included a link for in the description below, along with the particle that we're going to be using today called Scenery. So we'll make the assumption you don't know how to install a plugin. I mean, you probably do, but if you don't, go ahead and go to your folder, the games folder, go to the JavaScript folder, plugins, and then from the downloads, drag particle emitter into the location. I've already got it, so obviously I don't need it again, but if you don't, go ahead and add it. The next thing you need to do is you're going to have to go over to your root folder here of the game, go to your data folder, and make a folder called Particles. Then, take the scenery particle and drag it into that folder. Okay, that's all the folder work you're going to have to do. Now go into your plugin manager. And at the bottom, go ahead and add particle emitter. Just hitting OK. Obviously, I've already got it, so I don't need it twice, but for everyone at home who didn't have it, now you do. Now, in order to add that particle to particle emitter so it can use it, go ahead and go to your config name here in the text list. You'll have zero there. I've got a bunch already, but at the bottom of that list, type in scenery. You can technically change that plug that particle to whichever name you want, but whatever name you change that file to, you must put the exact same name in config name here. And that will be the command you use to use that particle. Go ahead and hit OK. Now I'm going to teach you how to parallax today using that scenery particle. It's a particle mostly designed to keep things in one place and is really good for just one singular image. It was designed to use the least amount of resources to get the job done, which is why I refer to it as the scenery particle. Later on, I'll show you particles for moving things around and better animation particles. But since those are more resource intensive, you probably don't want to parallax with those. So let's start by making an event. And we're going to do a script command. Unfortunately, because this uh, plugin was made by someone who has since left the community some two years ago and never updated it for MZ, you cannot use plugin commands for it in MZ. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you the script commands because they work for both. And honestly, they use less resources anyway. Not a whole lot less, but if you use it hundreds of times at a level like I do, it does actually matter. So the first command we're going to do to add a particle is game map dot create p emitter parenthesis. And we're going to um, you're going to put the name of it, make it a string. In this case, we'll just call this one background. Nice and simple. Add another comma, then add a bracket. Here you're going to put the names of whichever images you want to use in the particle. You can use any of the uh, images in your pictures folder. All you need to do is get the name of them. The one I'll be using is called story picture frame. Make certain to call it a string. You can, you know, use whatever picture name you want here. It's just whichever one you plan on using for this. Close it up with another bracket. And then go ahead and hit a comma. And now you're going to put the name of the particle. Again, make it a string. And it's going to be scenery. Finally, we're going to tell it which event it's going to be attached to. Now I could just use event one because, I mean, that would be the easy way, I suppose. However, most of the time I end up just using this dot underscore event ID because it means it will be attached to this event, so I can just copy and paste. And trust me, nobody wants to type this any more than they have to. Better to just copy and paste. 
This last one is not a string. It's simply a number. Let's go ahead and close it up with a parenthesis. And then hit OK. Now, don't forget to run your event. Very important. And you can either leave this event there and just have it switch to another page so that it doesn't keep adding this particle, or you can simply erase the event and the particle will stay. Your choice. We'll go with erase this time around. So let's run a test game. Well, well test tries. Not much of a game yet. As you can see, we have a background. But it's also kind of, you know, on top of the player sort of thing. It looks a little weird. That kind of sucks. And that's where our second command comes in. Let's make another script command. This one is going to be game map dot set perimeter Z. Put the name of the emitter that you want to do. In this case, we called the last one background, so you must call this one background in order to affect it. Hit a comma. And then feel free to put whatever Z you want. Since the player is at two, obviously you want to put something lower than that if you want the player to be on top of it and something higher if you want it to be in front of the player. Because this is a just a pixie container we're talking about here, there is no actual maximum or minimum number. You could do negative a million if you want or positive a million if you want. It doesn't matter. In this case, though, we're just going to make it zero. Go ahead and hit OK. And then we run it this time. Now the character is on top of it. Pretty easy. But then we have this little problem here. You look, there's this big space at the bottom. It looks terrible. It's actually cutting off the image at the top. That sucks. Now there's a couple things you could do. You could just move it down. Like I'll move it down three squares. And because it's strapped to the event. You can see that it has in fact moved it down. Cool. You know, not too bad. A little more accurate. But since this is exactly how I did it in Poppet Quest, I will show you the next command. Once again, make another script command. In this case, game map dot set p emitter pos. I like this one because I get to call it a pos. Very important. Once again, it is the background. Do you remember to make it a string? And then you're going to put how much you want to modify the x coordinate. In this case, negative 24. I already figured these out in my game, so if you're wondering where I got these numbers from, this is going to move it 24 pixels to the left. And I'm going to do 180, because this next one here is the y. And it's going to move it 180 pixels down. Go ahead and hit OK. And then running it again. There we go. That's nice and perfect like that. And all the way to the bottom. Wonderful. So now with our background made, we're going to show you how you can actually layer it by making an actual painting appear in that frame. So make another event. And this one is once again going to be a map dot create p emitter parenthesis and then we're going to go ahead and do this dot event id most of the time it's usually just better to use this because then it'll just take whatever the event id is of that event and use it as the name you can just copy and paste the code a lot which, trust me, you're going to want to do because typing this out every time is kind of tedious. Okay, so then go ahead and put a bracket. Put the name of what you want images to be. In this case, uh, Poppet Quest Mansion is the one I'm going to use. Close it with a bracket, then comma. And then scenery is the particle. And once again, we're just going to strap it to this event ID. And then do a parenthesis. 
and another script command because right now it's just going to appear at the Z, same Z as the event. So game map uh, set p emitter Z. This dot event ID. And the other was set at zero. But I'm going to go ahead and do negative a lot. Because this is like so far down that the deepest, darkest dungeon was literally built on top of this image. Do actually remember to run your event and, you know, make it erase itself so you don't continuously add this particle over and over and over. Otherwise, it will, in fact, lag out your game. Then we hit play. And look, now I have a picture. But it's a slight bit off, and that looks kind of terrible. And you know, if I move the event down one, well, then it would be 48 pixels, and it would look once again terrible. So we go back to setting the P emitter position for the POS. So game map dot set P emitter POS. Parenthesis this dot event ID. And in this case, I'm just gonna move it down five. Well, zero and then five. The first number, of course, being the x coordinate and the second being the y. And now when I run it, look, now it's all nice and perfect. That's great and all. Now we have this, you know, background thing. That's cool. But what about the foreground? Well, it probably doesn't take much to figure out that I said you could do negative a million or even positive a million if you want. So let's go ahead and make another event. But this time, let's just go ahead and copy this event and I'll show you why. We'll copy it down to how about here. Go ahead and open that event up. And in this case, all you have to do is change the name of the particle because it's going to use the event ID. It's going to use scene as the name. It's going to use scenery as the particle and it's going to strap it to this particular event, which is why I wrote it like this. The image I'll be using, Storybox 1. You, of course, can use whatever image you want. And then Set P emitter Z, go ahead and set this to a number that's higher than the player. Remember the player is at two. I'll go ahead and set it to 10. Seems reasonable. And I don't really think this is gonna to matter too much on uh, if I set the P emitter Z five down. So I'll just go ahead and leave that for purposes of this. And now when I hit play, oh look boxes that the player can run behind. Maybe a little higher up than I want, but that's pretty, pretty easy to fix. You just move that down and or use the, uh, the POS command. Look, because it follows the event, it's just good to go. But what if I'm just saying you don't like a particle at the moment. Maybe you just want it there temporarily. Well, that leads to the final command we're going to be using today. And to demonstrate this command, we're no longer going to erase this event. I'm going to go back to this wonderful painting of the mansion. And I'm going to go ahead and institute a 60 frame wait. This is purely to show you that it is working. And then I'll turn self switch A on. I'll make a new event page and this one will be triggered off of self switch A. And this is where we introduce the last command. Game map dot delete P emitter. And then the name of the P emitter. In this case, this dot event ID. Make sure to print that in parentheses and then hit OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and put yet another wait just 60 frames and then I'm going to turn self switch A off. And what this will do is it will create, I'm going to also put a 
this turn this page on so it's parallel. But what this will do is it will make it so that it flickers. Deleting it and then adding it over and over again. So you can see that it's doing it. This would be great for like, you know, changing channels on a TV. Or if you happen to do it fast enough and use images that are slightly different, you can in fact animate things this way. I'm just saying. So that'll be it for today. If you like this tutorial, I'm going to be doing more. The next one will be about a movable particle that will actually follow events. You can actually have things, you know, like cars driving around or something. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check back for the next video.